on top of the morning or midday or afternoon or evening to you whenever you are tuning in. It is so good to be with you. Today, we're gonna pick up from yesterday as we are talking about things we can do to help us give and receive love more deeply. We've talked about God's perfect love but about our imperfect love. We have talked about how in order to love deeply, we have to be willing to hurt deeply as well. And then yesterday we spoke about reconciliation and relationships with God and people and that division in those relationships has come because of sin. Today we're going to speak about how to engage in loving, life-giving relationships with one another. So let's start with the disposition of our heart. And this will come out of Ephesians 4.15 where God tells us that we're to speak the truth in love and how this is part of the process of entering into maturity in Christ. It takes being honest, speaking truthfully to one another, but doing so in a way that's humble and loving. Let's remember back to 1 John 4 and 1 Corinthians 13 about what love is. See, whenever we're having these conversations, whenever we're loving one another, it's with the other person's best interests in mind. That is our aim and our goal to speak truth in love. Again, often at the center of broken relationships is sin, but the good thing is Jesus made a way for us to first be reconciled to his Father, and then he laid out the path for us to be healed and reconciled to one another. Let's look at a few passages. We have James 5:16, Luke 17:3, Romans 15:14, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 through 15, and these are just a few of the scriptures that talk about how we can relate to one another as followers of Jesus. They talk about how we confess to one another, to pray for one another, to forgive one another, to admonish, to rebuke, to teach, to be patient, to encourage, and to allow others to do this to us. See, this will be the testing of love for many of us. Do we love one another enough to say the things we need to say? And do we trust others enough that when they correct or rebuke us, it's because they love us? If you find it's hard for you to love and be loved, I, I wanna encourage you to start with repentance for your own sin and then to forgive others and receive the forgiveness from God. It's not to pull back from relationships, but to enter into relationships with others because if you wanna experience love and give love, it's only gonna happen in the context of relationships. And I know that this can be more challenging for some than others, but the hard work and the obedience to God will yield an abundance of reward on the other side. And these are just a few examples of passages like these that speak to how we are to engage with one another as followers of Jesus, whether you're inside the brotherhood or you're outside. See, the things that I just listed, to confess to one another, to pray for one another, to forgive one another, to admonish, to rebuke, teach, be patient, to encourage, these are the things that allow us to really love one another. But Doing these things will be the testing for many of us. See, do we love one another enough to say the things we need to say, to speak the truth in love? And do we trust others enough that when they correct or rebuke us, it's because they love us? If you find it is hard for you to love and be loved, I wanna encourage you to start with repentance for your own sin and forgiveness before God and to others. To not pull back, but to enter into relationships with others because really, it takes being in relationships to love and be loved. Now, I know this can be challenging and maybe more challenging for some, but the hard work and the obedience to God will yield an abundance of reward on the other side. See, this is the way. This is the way so we can do what John 13, 35 says. That's where God tells us that it is by our love for one another that people will know that we are disciples of Him. And then in Matthew 5, 44 through the Beatitudes, talking about loving and praying for our enemies, caring for them, caring for them. See, this is a radical way of living and it's a challenging way of living, but it is a beautiful way of living. And it allows us to live in the love with God and others and therein glorify our Father in heaven. It takes time. It's not overnight. It takes having a vision for what love can be given by God and His Word. 
And then the intention that we set to say we are going to enter in and do what it takes to be that person. And then understanding the means, the application, the processes, the habits need to be formed to enter into that. This is not easy, but it is good news. And it's good news because Jesus is with us in it all. And by depending upon him and following him, he will change us. And if you want to better understand some of the practical steps you can take to begin entering into these, some of the means, uh, the growth track is a great place to start. And there's more info about that on the app or the web. And we're not done this week. We have two more days ahead talking about things we can do to enter into more loving relationships. We'll be right back here. I'm looking forward to joining you right here tomorrow. Same place. Peace.